Hello and welcome to WCP's exclusive video of the 78th Giro d'Italia. I'm Phil Liggett and as always, it's a pleasure to guide you through another top bike race. This year, the Giro lost its tag as being a training race for the Tour de France. It was hard, very hard, and found a truly outstanding winner. The route totaled almost 4,000 kilometers to the Dolomites and the Alps and attracted 22 teams of nine riders each. A feel bigger than the upcoming Tour de France. I hope you enjoy it. I'm not sure all the riders did. And almost the whole field now have come back together on this opening stage of 205 kilometers going from Perugia to Terni. And I must say, it didn't look this way earlier on. There was a breakaway of some 16 riders. In that leading group was the hot favourite, Tony Rominger, and not in that front group were the two gay whiz riders, Evgeny Berzin and Piotr Ugramov. And not uh, surprisingly, it was the gay whiz team who chased down the breakaway. So they've come all together, and the riders in the yellow jerseys down there are Mercatoni Uno, and now they're trying to set the finish up for their fastest man in the world. He says that, not me, Mario Cipollini, the Lion King. And the rain again has started to fall here. It's been under grey skies for most of the day, most unlike the weather we expect on the opening stage of the Tour of Italy, which is starting in the middle of the leg of Italy itself. Now the sprint is beginning and Mercatoni Uno trying to bring through Mario Cipollini. Cipollini in the centre waiting to burst out of the pack. Also in this lead group two is Johan Capio in the red jersey. The former champion of Belgium now on the Italian Renfin team. And it's a very, very good sprint. It most certainly is the sort of sprint that Cipollini would like to take on. And he's thinking now of the Maglia Rosa, the jersey he's always promised himself in the first stage. And now he's coming clear. And Capio and Mario Manzoni are the two chasing him, but they won't get him. On the line, Cipollini takes it very clearly for Mario Manzoni. So what a start for the tall Italian, having a great season this year. And now, as a reward, he becomes the first leader of the Tour of Italy. And he's never done that before. And he's now the leader, taking into account time bonuses by four seconds over Manzoni. In fact, they show Van den Abel as third here. It was, in fact, his teammate, Johan Capio, taking that third place. So, for the moment, Capio is eight seconds behind Cipollini, the race leader. Now we move on to the first individual test. There was no prologue in this year's Giro d'Italia, and the riders now facing up on stage two to a 19 kilometers individual time trial between Foligno and Assisi. And as you can see, the sting in the tail is a tough little climb that comes uh, all the way up to the finishing line and will certainly prove crucial. Evgeny Berzin, the man who shone last year in the Tour of Italy and actually beat Miguel Indurain in the time trial. Indurain not here. He feels this race is too hard this year he's continuing to prepare and prepare very well indeed for the Tour de France but Evgeny Berzin who won this race with a great confidence last year is now probably going to find that the challenge will not only come from Tony Rominger the Swiss rider but also from his own teammate Piotr Ugramov who was second to Miguel Indurain a couple of years ago Rolf Sorensen and the rain again falling we're not very far away from the previous day's start in fact and the rain staying here in the centre of Italy. Rolf Sorensen, the Danish rider, stage winner last year of the Tour de France stage into Montpellier. And this rider here is Fabio Fontanelli. And in his sights and going through is Evgeny Berzin, who's picking the riders off, so it looks like the little Russian is beginning to ride back to his old form here. These are the sort of conditions I suspect that the former Soviet riders should enjoy. They're very hard men indeed, although Berzin now, a resident of Italy, and perhaps uh, enjoying brighter conditions as a rule. Tony Rominger, the pressure on this man. Three times in succession, the winner of the Tour of Spain, that in itself a record, now comes for a real crack at the Giro d'Italia. He knows that today he must impress Yen Zenon Yaskula, hoping to get a late uh, selection for the Tour de France this year. His team still left out, and he wants a good performance. He doesn't even go up to the time set by Ugramov, who's already gone. And Rominger is away. The very narrow streets that typify this beautiful country. 
And the arrival of Bursey, you can see the time of Ugramov on the screen at 26.13.7. 26 minutes dead for Bursey, so he's put 13 seconds exactly into his teammate. So the battle for team leadership there for the moment swinging to Bursey, the defending champion. Maurizio Fondrias, the eternal second on the circuit this year, now looking to break that and try and get a victory along the road. The start, very hazardous indeed. And the man who won the sprint yesterday, Mario Cipollini, he won't be feeling confident of retaining this leader's pink jersey. He's certainly not a time trial specialist, although in the team time trial, with the help of a strong team, he has won those. Tony Rominger settling in, the world hour record holder, who everybody feels may have put that record on the shelf in excess of 55 kilometres covered in the hour. And then he's proving to us right now he's got the speed. And this is the first time check in the town of Spello, approximately eight kilometres covered. And Rominger is a little bit down on the star names of this year's race. In fact, he's going through, even with Cipollini to come, only in fifth best time. So he's made a very sedate start here in the bad weather. Meanwhile, Claudio Chiapucci is heading towards the finish. And it's not a good time for Claudio, twice the runner-up in the Giro d'Italia. He's lost 55.8 seconds to Evgeny Berzin, who's home and not so dry. But Casa Grande has also finished with a great time of 25.56 and now this is the arrival of Rolf Sorensen who has been setting the trend out on the course. Has he maintained it up the hill? 25 minutes and 52 seconds. That is the new best time for Rolf Sorensen of Denmark. And now just Tony Rominger to match that. And he's going to be very, very close indeed. But Rominger is going to get the best time. He must have made a tremendous climb up to the finish here to get the better of Rolf Sorensen. 25.05. 47 seconds quicker than Sorensen. What a climb he did up to the summit here. Now let's go back out to Maurizio Fondrias, the Italian who is trying to match the stars now, surprisingly, who are Rominger, Sorensen and Casagrande. Fondrias splits them. He gets third place, 25-52. And now Mario Cipollini in a pink jersey, we'd almost forgotten about him out there on the course by himself today in the rain. He comes up to the finish and not a bad ride either, but he's out of the pink jersey, only 10th best for Mario Cipollini. So predictably, Cipollini has lost his overall lead after one day in pink. It now goes across to Tony Rominger, and it's his first day ever in the pink leader's jersey. And if he intends to keep this all the way to the finish, then he has a real race on his hands. Five hours, 40 minutes, 56 seconds. He's been racing for two days now. Fondrest is second at 43 seconds back. Rolf Sorensen up to third, 49 seconds down. This is Marotta on the shores of the Adriatico, the Adriatic Sea. And it's here where the riders are now facing up for stage number three from Spoleto. It's a ride of 161 kilometres. And it really should be a day for the sprinters, but you can never be certain as they wend their way out to the beautiful seaside resort at Marotta. Not too many challenges out on the course, and as they pop up out of the hole in the road here, this is the first inter-giro sprint of the day, and keeping up the rhythm in the sprint is Mario Cipollini. Always enjoys a good battle of shoulders. And Cipollini in that interim sprint competition, racing for the blue leader's jersey, which is currently worn today by Maurizio Fondriest. Now the riders having covered the comparatively slow speed there of nearly 35 kilometers in the first hour. And this picture designed to make us all dizzy as we see the complete field in the Giro d'Italia, 198 of them. And so, Tony Rominger, happy ensconce in this group, defending a 43-second lead over Maurizio Fondriest. And uh, Francisco Casagrande is the fourth, Berzin is fifth, Cipollini currently in sixth place. And bonuses again on the line today. Cipollini no doubt conscious of that. Now this little breakaway getting clear, 51 kilometers from the finish. Paolo Lanfranchi, uh, Giorgio Ferlan, Andrea Taffi, Massi and Piccoli. And Piccoli and Lanfranchi on the same Brasiliat team. The other two represent Gaywiz, Mappe and Refan. And they're making a gain now, I would say, of around about a minute and a half over the field. There's no real big name in that breakaway group, so there's no reason for the Mappe, who've all got the front of the bunch here. Uh, to chase them down, it's more likely to be the Mercatoni Uno riders if they're thinking of Cipollini for the stage win. And not surprisingly now, the 
Yellow jerseys of Mercatoni have got themselves to the front to give Mappe a hand in the chase down. And the weather has changed, and much for the better. This is a flat, and this indeed is Nicolai Minali, the rider who won a stage of the Tour de France in Great Britain last year, down in Portsmouth, and he's having his best season ever. It just shows you what a victory does. And Minali is back out chasing he should get back because the field is settled down quite nicely here now as Mercatoni brings it all back together again and now you get the reason why 52 kilometers an hour uh, set by the boys who ride a very good team time trial when they get the chance and right now they're doing it again here and thinking of their man Mario Cipollini this is the leading group and you can see they decided to throw in the towel and looking over the shoulder the red jersey there is Rodolfo Massi from the refing team and that's the reason why Massi is the first to surrender but they're all going to come back uh, just uh, Adri Tandria Taffy trying to go clear here and I think he's still got with him Giorgio Ferland but they're going to have to give up very shortly because the train is in full full flight here and Mercatoni Uno have got all men up front and they're towing at the back of that chain Mario Cipollini onto the coast and swinging round towards the finish now so this is going to be another big sprint and again the riders who are going to mix it up they're going to have to see if they can take on Mario Cipollini once more the end of just 100 miles of racing Cipollini's got the front two Capio in the red trying to get through again a Jan Zarada on the left but look at him made it look very very easy indeed Mario Cipollini gets the stage win Johan Capio on the far right on the rails takes second place and and Citerio from the AKI team, he'll be there in the third slot. And there's confirmation of the overall situation at the end of the third stage. And no change at all. And Rominger still holding on, 43 seconds ahead of Fondriest and Rolf Sorensen. And so we move on to stage number four. And two stage wins in the bag for Mario Cipollini. That's a rather familiar scene for him in a big stage race in the early part of it. This is the route they face, going from Mondolfo to Loreto, 192 kilometres, staying more or less on the coast of the Adriatic Sea. But this is a course with a difference, because right towards the end of the route, you see the profile looks the same all the way along. That's because they do five identical 23-kilometer circuits. And here's the rider who has set this race alight today, Fabrizio Bontempi. No relation, by the way, to the famous Guido Bontempi, who's won almost a dozen stages of the Giro d'Italia over the years. But this is the less uh, significant member of the, of the group. 140 kilometers he's been out in front, and the main field has slowly wound him in. And the Mappe riders all around Rominger today because the feeling is that this could be a very crucial stage. No major mountain climbs, but a very difficult circuit indeed, worthy of a world championship. And the crashes are happening as well. 105 is Angle Camargo of Kelme. The two boys in red who are having a rough time here are Carlos Galareta, Jose Maria Uria. The road, in fact, had just been resurfaced and quite clearly it's caused a bit of a problem. Now onto the climb here. And Tony Rominger in the pink, quite literally, has got his MAPE team organised well as they go over the top. And Podensana, the champion of Italy, not too far off his wheel either. Now, this is a difficult stretch of the road, these 23 kilometre circuits. And again, the pressure is going on at the front. A number of riders still trying to break clear here. And this is an attack now by Antonio Finelli. But it looks as though the Mappe riders are paying very close attention. Onto the climb again. Still, Rominger has the riders at the front. He rides fourth on the wheel of his team. He knows that this field could split on this very, very difficult climb indeed. Well, this has been a tremendous circuit, in fact, well worthy, as I said earlier, of a World Championship event. And Rominger has shown just what a strong man he is today. Berzin is on the left of our picture to the right shoulder of Tony Rominger. So he sensed, too, that this could be a crucial stage in the Giro d'Italia. Not too sure about the race referee's car being right where it was just there, as the Gaywee's team now start to turn the screw and test the Mappe boys. Go the devil. Well, that is uh, an allusion there towards uh, Claudio Chiapucci. And the Gaywiz riders trying desperately now to break up the grip of Mappe. It looks like Bruno Kengialta here on the front, who's stretching them clear, but Rominger is keeping an eye on him. And this is David Rebelin, one win uh, this year, which came just before the start of this race in the Tour of Trentino. And they've got 15 seconds. They climb up now towards the end of this stage. 
The whole field, although it's split up quite considerably, this is a very select big bunch, actually, around about 50 or 60 riders. They try to chase the two leaders. Uh, Claudio Chiapucci, this is. Twice second, once third in the Giro, but never the winner. He's come up against just one or two men, always better than him. And Chiapucci trying to drag the race back together. One thing about Il Diablo, he never gives up attacking. And he's trying to go alone on a difficult stage. There's definitely the possibility of gaining small time gains here today. And it's a very, very difficult course for any team to control the race properly. Kiputi trying to reach Rebelin and Kengi Alta. And he's going to do it as well. Three very strong riders getting together at the front. They all know each other extremely well. But uh, it may well come too late because it looks as though Kiapucci is going to be the forward emissary for quite a big group coming up. And the pink jersey of Rominger, you can spot him quite clearly, is third in that line. So despite the nature of a very difficult course and the distance of 192 kilometers today, it looks as though the pink jersey of Tony Rominger is coming right back into contention here. And there's been a crash on the corner. There's one of the riders from the Lamprey team has gone off on the bend there. Well, service is at hand. And a quick push back into the race, but it was a shame because he was right on the front of the main field there. Now, inside the last kilometre to go here, the race is all coming together. And again, a complete misjudging of the right-hand bend there by the Gaywiz rider. Vladislav uh, Bobrik, the former uh, Soviet rider, used to ride for the, the Red Guard and well known for taking the lead for almost a week in the Tour du Pont a few years ago and winner last year of the Tour of Lombardy. Bobrik trying to go, but he's being reached by none other than Tony Rominger here. Rominger, you can see they can all see each other, but they're all going so slowly on what is a very difficult climb. Rominger is sweeping through here and really stamping his pure class on the Giro d'Italia. Winner of the time trial stage, Tony Rominger is now taking out a road race stage and he's going to take it in grand style. He's stamping on the pedals on the climb here. Up to the finishing line for the last time. The crowd have been entertained to a very, very difficult stage of the Giro today. And Tony Rominger is going to gain time on everybody. Rominger hits the line, gets the victory. Stage win number two of this year's tour for him. Fondriest it is who crosses the line in second place. Then it's Casa Grande, followed by Claudio Chiapucci. Hung on well there to finish in fourth place. A battle of the giants indeed. And Tony Rominger has proven now he really is the man to beat in this year's race. And the route continues down the eastern coastline of the leg of Italy, now racing from Porto Recanati to Tortorito Lido. A ride of 182 kilometres, and the lead now of Tony Rominger over Maurizio Fondriest is 51 seconds. And Francisco Casagrande still surprising with a great third place, one minute seven seconds back. Last year's defending champion, Berzine, is fourth, a minute and 15. And this breakaway of 36 riders in the beginning escapes after 24 kilometers of the stage has been covered. It's thinning out a little bit now, and the illusion of it always being bright, warm, sunny weather in Italy again being broken today as the rain comes down on what is a very green part of the country. And the main field here, under the guidance, not surprisingly, of Mappe, although they're not very inspired at the moment, has allowed the breakaway to gain a maximum of 10 minutes and 30 seconds. And in that breakaway, we have Rolf Sorensen, the big danger, being allowed to escape. He was up to third place overall, remember, after his time trial. And now he is the race leader on the road. So sooner or later, the Mappe team are going to have to uh, come out and show us again their skills. Although it must be said that when Tony Rominger uh, took over the Malia Rosa at the uh, end of stage number two, he did say he didn't want to keep it all the way to the finish in Milan. So this may be the time for Rominger to stay close, but take the pressure away from the team and allow a new leader in the tour. And it will be Rolf Sorensen. Sorensen just passing through our picture on the right there. This is the breakaway group. And they've gone very, very steady, but what they don't know, or what they may know, is there's still quite a climb to come before the finish. Gelfi, number 46, who has just passed through, and the sun catching the cameras now. That's uh, Maria Chiesa, 
A very consistent rider. Oh, and there's a crash gone down in a bunch, a touch of wheels and pulled down three or four riders there. That is what happens on the slower uh, section of the course. A moment's lack of concentration, a touch of wheels, and they're down like a pack of cards. I don't think that rider's injured. But the crash, uh, we believe, being caused by the Russian rider Pavel Tonkov. And I think it's Tonkov down there in the Lamprey jersey, who's still left on the roadside. This is Mario Chiesa sitting up near the front. And Eric Bruykink, the team leader, or at least carrying the team leader's number on the ONSE team. And the group is now down to 4 minutes 30 seconds. And it's no longer 36 riders strong either. And so the riders, the gap is closing, but the finish is going to elude the main field. And these are the four survivors of the breakaway. Mario Chiesa, now Rolf Sorensen is going for the finish, followed by Filippo Casagrande and Eric Broeking. They're the men who are trying to make it to the line now. Sorensen taking on Filippo Casagrande in his first year at Italia. He gets a stage victory. And Sorensen will have to be content with second. Broeking is in third place. But the time gains in the end were not enough for Rolf Sorensen. The pink jersey staying on the shoulders of Tony Rominger today. And I'm not surprised Filippo Casagrande in tears, he's beaten some big names. And there he is, the Filippo Casagrande, the younger brother of Francisco Casagrande. Perhaps his brother's more famous, but he's got the stage win. And so, on to stage number six of the 78th Giro d'Italia, and the riders now heading from Trani to Taranto. 165 kilometres going inland, away from the Adriatic Sea. Not a lot to worry the riders, uh, the hills still to come in this very difficult tour route this year, but there are one or two ups and downs, and those who want to attack, the occasion surely is there today. We're now at 63 kilometres from the finish here, there's hardly been an attack all day in fact, and the riders enjoying the rather sunny conditions which have at last arrived on the Giro d'Italia. The overall lead is still with Rominger, 51 seconds ahead of Fondriest, a minute seven against Francisco uh, Casagranda, and a minute 15 on the defending champion, Berzin. And you see, the job of a domestic is not just setting the pace for a teammate either. In this case, Miguel Peña is having to give Tony Rominger a helping hand. So quite clearly the field enjoying the day and no real attacks coming but the finish will be coming shortly and they won't want to give it all to the sprinters as Rominger takes a drink and goes back into the thick of the fray. This is Bruno Kengialta here and according to the caption on his wheel is Paolo Lanfranchi. Kengialta being particularly active in the Giro so far. Very, very good rider indeed, former stage winner in the Tour de France as well. And now the peloton is being pulled out into a much, much longer line. A sign that they're getting a little bit angry, I think. King Yalta, and Frankie is the rider setting the pace. And we're heading now towards the Intergiro Sprint, which is the interim competition, the sprinters' competition sometimes called the hot spot along the route where there's an individual prize and this little gap now has got 38 seconds they weren't interested in the special sprint at all they wanted time over the field Lanfranchi Kengi Alta two strong teams backing them up and it could well be that they could spoil the fun here the sprinters as we head into Taranto and in fact, there's a puncture. Kengi Alta has signaled to his team car. He has a front wheel puncture. Now Moreno Argentin is in that gave his team car. The former top Italian and ex-world champion won his first world title, let's not forget, in America when the world champions were in Colorado Springs in the mid-80s. And a good wheel change and he's back into the thick of the fray. But I'm afraid that that is going to destroy the rhythm of Bruno Kengi Alta. He can't be too far ahead of the field, and there they are in full cry as well. So they're going to have Bruno, and then I think they'll pick up Paolo Lanfranchi as well. And so Lanfranchi looks over his shoulders. He's going to see the field, although he's sticking doggedly to his task here. The Brescialat team had a victory yesterday with Casagrande, but I don't think that the pendulum will swing his way again today. There they are, and they're not even racing that quickly because they're all ganging up now to decide which one is going to start the attack. There's still 20 kilometres, that's around about 12 miles from the finish. There's still time to play another car before the sprinters come into it. 
isn't the sort of road, though, I must say, to encourage attacks. These long, straight, wide autostradas are not the place for the sprinters to pull away from the front of the field. The domestics are going to work hard to hold this together. They're chasing down Lang Frankie, and they're reaching him. The strategy, an immediate counter-attack. And this looks like an attack going now from the Amore Vita team on the right. But quickly back together. These are the difficult moments in the any stage of a big race when the attacks come all the time as riders try to break up the field. And then they gradually get them pulled back together again. And this is Roland Meyer from TVM, who's now put his head down and he lives in hope that he'll go clear of the field. 149th overall and just over half an hour down. He's lost all of that in just under 900 kilometers of this year's Giro d'Italia. Now this isn't the coast by the way. We're now arriving at Taranto. This is a lake and the riders coming in towards the finish and all getting themselves back together again. The Gayways team setting the pace. They've got two men likely candidates for final victory now with Ugrimov and Berzin both up there in the overall classification. But the sprinters again are going to have their day and Cipollini has got his men once again organised for his third win here. And Cipollini comes out from the left of our picture now. We've also got on the... In fact, we've got the pink jerseys too trying to get through there now. Jan Zverada is behind Cipollini on his wheel. And Nicola Manali is also coming through now. This is going to be a great sprint finish. But Cipollini looks as though he's not very happy at all with the result of this one. He's been washed away. And Manali's going to get it on the line. Nicola Manali takes it on the line ahead of Cipollini, who is in the Mauve jersey here as the leader of the points competition. But for this occasion, at least, he has to be content with second place. But even so, he'll keep the lead in the points while the stage win has gone to Nicola Manali and this, his eighth win of his most successful season so far. Tony Rominger, untroubled today. He holds his overall lead by 51 seconds ahead of Maurizio Fondriest and the Casagrande is third, a minute seven. Burz in fourth, Ugrimov is fifth. And you go right down to Pavel Tonkov, who's had one or two ups and downs. He's in seventh place. And the race route today, the seventh stage from Taranto, goes right around the Gulf of Taranto before it finishes in Terme Luigiani, 216 kilometres, and the hill coming just before the end, and that's the sort of hill that the climbers will look at to try and break away from the field. Here's our view, Italian television are giving us, of the finish. All we've got to do now is ride the 216 kilometres to get there. The beautiful blue waters here, and... Uh, I must say, Italy, a very inviting country indeed. Unless, of course, you're riding the Giro d'Italia. And on a very tortuous descent, a breakaway here of six riders. Udo Boltz is in it, so too is Mario Chiesa, Finelli and Ellie. And it looks as though they're being hunted down by none less than the sprint king himself. And that's Mario Cipollini riding in blue because he leads the sprint competition, the Inter-Giro, as well as the points competition. And so today he's pulled on the blue jersey as leader of the sprint. And Rominger himself has joined him at the front. Now, Rominger probably keeping out of trouble here because this is quite a difficult area of the countryside. The roads are narrow, it's dangerous. But it is unusual, I must confess, to see the pink jersey taking such an interest on a stage like this. And Cipollini too, normally a sprinter, is having a go to try and reach this breakaway of six men. You get some idea there, the tortuous descent, they drop down. And there's no doubt about the strength of these two riders, if they can work clear of the field. But the field, I would think, in a little bit of disarray. And not surprisingly, Gay Wiz are bringing it back into order. Ugrimov and Berzin certainly not allowing the pink jersey too far a lead here. So... Berzin has got to the front of that group and brought it back into order as we continue on the descent. And the whole field has more or less got back here. This is still the breakaway, but they're only hovering just in front of the group. And I would think that Mario Cipollini, time is running out for the big sprinter because the hills will be coming shortly. And so he's trying to bring this break of six back personally uh, so he can line himself up for the finish down in Luigiani. Of course, he may be disappointed today when he gets there because the finish is a, a slight drag uphill and not really a finish for Cipollini at all. 
Thomas Davy having made this group as well, member of the Bonesto team, and having to face up probably to two big tours this year because Miguel Induain in the upcoming Tour de France will rely a lot on uh, Thomas Davy, the Frenchman, because he's such a strong rider. Inside, uh, 14 kilometers from the finish now, and this looks like Sergei Uchikov who's trying to have a little dig at the front. Slowly but surely, the riders are climbing up to the heights towards the finishing line, and there's still this breakaway is just about hanging on. Uchikov is bringing across the main field a lot of power in this young man's legs as well. And he's going to reach them first, almost certainly. And uh, the pink jersey never far away from the front. What a great race that Tony Rominger is riding. And remember, this is only in the first full week of the Giro d'Italia. Uchikov hanging on to his rhythm nicely. Well, he was, but he's lost it completely now because his legs just locked up as he realized there was no point in the effort because the Mappe boys have organized the chase down. And they're now beginning to close down the gap as a group. Seven kilometers to go, most of it climbing now all of the way to the line. The pink jersey of Rominger keeping in a position where he can control just about everything. He'll watch just the men nearest to him at the moment. Remember that Mauricio Fondriest is second overall in the race. And we haven't seen a lot of him either, I must say. Uh, Casa Grande is third and Berzin is fourth. Claudio Chiacucci on the Carrera team. Always a high flyer, Monsieur d'Italia. He's in 11th place at the minute, 2 minutes 24 seconds away from the Maglia Rosa. And now back with the leading group here. They may be being caught at the moment, but this is still an attack here, and it's gone now from Alessandro Bertolini of Carrera. And that's caused the reaction. But they're only just dangling off the front of the whole race, and now you get the picture here. Down below is the end of the tail of the leaders. And now you see the main field spiralling down towards them. And what a marvellous picture that is from the helicopter. And I must say that all of the motorbikes from the press are stuck in between. They're going to have to find a way out of this pretty quickly now. It's reminiscent of the descent down the Poggio, down into the end of Milan San Remo, the great classic at the beginning of the season. Now the rider here trying to just keep the race going is Alberto Elli. And look at the speed that they're managing. They're, don't forget, they're coming off the swoop as well, but they're still clocking just under 60 kilometers an hour as they try to stay clear. There's the man that started the reaction, number 58, Bertolini, and still trying to keep it going. But now I think the field has got them in their sights, and there's just a couple of survivors as he's gay whiz bringing the field up. Bertolini is still here as he tries desperately to hang on and he's going to go for it himself he's going to try and hang on towards the finish the finish is not very far away and Bertolini could get this he's the only one left of that breakaway of six now as the Gaywiz team try to close down the gap and Rominger is in there too Rominger lying fourth or fifth down the line it looks like Maurizio Fondri is just in front of Tony Rominger Bertolini hanging on as the riders come up towards the finish now Rominger is waiting to start the spin here and Ugramov is trying to lead out, but he's falling away as Rominger starts. And now Fondriest has got his wheel and Casagrande is tucked in into third place. This again has become a battle among the leaders of the Giro d'Italia. And Fondriest is in the best position, but remember, he's been second more times this year than he cares to remember. But not this time. Rominger has dropped back and Fondriest has gone forward. Casagrande is trying. Ugramov is hanging on there in fourth place. But again, Maurizio Fondriest is back on the winner's podium for only the second time this year. He won a stage of the three days of De Panna. He gets the victory in this stage of the Giro d'Italia. And there's the result. Fondrias getting home just ahead of Rominger and Casagrande. Ugrimov, in fact, was given fourth. The numbers have been mistaken by the cameras. Eight days now covered in the Giro. This is stage number eight, Aquapesa Marina at sea level, taking the riders right to the heights of 1,546 metres at Monte Serino. 209 kilometres a day, perhaps, for the riders to test the strength of Tony Rominger, who has led this race since day two. And round the rims of what appears to be a crater here at the moment, but the riders are going to be climbing for much of the day and descending as well. 
and a breakaway of 16 men. They got clear after 22 kilometers on the first climb of the day and it's being led here by Francesco Frattini who comes to this race having just won the Grand Prix of Frankfurt, his first World Cup event, continuing the trend of the successful Italian riders again this year. There's the lineup for the breakaway, and Frattini has a teammate in here in Bruno Kengialta, this immensely strong Italian, who is threatening to do something big in this race. He's been challenging almost daily. And once again, the pressure back on the MAPE team. They're having to do an awful lot of work for Tony Rominger. He's taken the lead in this tour so early on, and although originally he said he didn't want to keep the pink jersey all the way to the finish, to me, he looks as though he might have changed his mind. There he is, staying in amongst with the teammates, while the breakaway itself is thinning out a little bit, but still here is Hernan Buena Herra, also Georg Tochnik of Poltney, Simone of Borgerese, Mariana Piccoli, who has been a long-time leader of the King of the Mountain section of this race, and the Cubino, the leader of the Kelme team. And there is Tony Romiga. None of the riders in the lead breakaway, a particular threat at the moment to the pink jersey of Tony Romiga. The gap, three minutes, two seconds. That's about the best we've had all day. And Evgeny Berzin taking full advantage of the MAP-18 tactics and sitting in there nicely, the defending champion, don't forget. It was only in the last week of the Giro last year where he started to look a little bit more normal as Miguel Indurain got into his stride. And the breakaway there beginning to splinter now. They're down to just eight riders in that front group. And this is Kengi Alta on the front. Georg Tochnik trying to go clear at the back as well. The four of them going ahead here. Cubino is the other rider from Kelme. And this is the remnants of the breakaway. Frattini now at the back of that second group. So the eight men are split into two groups of four. And Kelme have got their two strong men up here. Buena Hora, the Colombian member, and also the team leader, Lordalina Cubino. Remember last year, Cubino got away on his own and won a stage. That was his first ever stage victory in the Giro d'Italia. And now he's got into what could be the right move again. Berzin not interested either in the breakaway. More the whereabouts of Tony Rominger. Pavel Tonkov on his right shoulder. Well, there's been no indication yet from Berzin just how well he really is going in this year's Giro d'Italia. And Tony Rominger hasn't been put under pressure yet by him either. The group split is 12 seconds apart, four and four, and the main field is coming back as well. A minute and 37 seconds. We're now on the climb which will take us up to the top, and the climb is 5,000 plus feet to the summit. Very fast, but steady tempo. Nobody willing to set the pace at all. Nine kilometers to the finish. Georg Tochnik, I saw him race as an amateur in the Tour of South Africa, a very, very talented mountain climber indeed. Just beginning to get his feet now as a professional rider one of uh, Austria's finest amateur cyclists, along with the Land Franke. And this is Gibino and King Yalta. And in fact, it looks to me as though they've dropped to this. Piccoli, the King of the Mountains leader, he's back in the group now, so he's been caught from that leading breakaway. He's in the green jersey. And also disappeared now is Buena Hora. Totsnik taking a look down as we get through to seven kilometers to go. And Cubino, I was about to say, he seems to be the strong man, and as I was about to say it, he's launched an acceleration like all good climbers can. Kengi Alta is straight onto him, and at the same time, the Palti team car is up there to talk to Tochnik, and a chance to encourage Tochnik as well. Kengi Alta cracked. He could not match the rhythm there of Cubino, and now it's up to Georg Tochnik to try and cross the gap alone, because Kengi Alta hit the wall in no uncertain terms there. So Cubino trying to go away for what would be only his second ever stage victory in the Tour of Italy. Concentrating very well indeed. The team, one of the early selections for this year's Tour de France, and that makes a change because they're so often on the reserve list. Now, can Tochnik get across the gap here? This is a chance for Georg Tochnik to really shine and give the team a big result. The rhythm behind continues, Moto3 indicating now that we have two split groups up front and the third motorcycle camera coming back to the head of the main peloton. 
a long twisting descent. It's only a little bit of a brief descent before the climb begins again, and we're going down at between 45 and 50 kilometers an hour. And Cabrino now trying to go clear, and that lead car, I would suggest, wants to get out of the way. Because the Cubino, oh and my goodness me, this is the race for second place and Totsinger has gone down, it appears, uh, just as in fact um, Bruno Kengi Alta had arrived back on the scene and I must say the faulty team car was there rather swiftly. But listen to the skidding tyres of the lead car here because they can't get out of the way of the fastest ending Cubino. Let's look at the crash here now, Kengi Alta had just come back over the top and was on the wheel. And it was about now where Georg Toshing realised he wasn't going to make this bend. He put his front brake on as well and then he overshot it. Well, he was lucky he was able to get some control on the bike there because the fall, nothing like as serious as it might have been. Meanwhile, with his braces stuck to the fender of the lead car, we have Lordelino Cubino trying to get space on the descent here. And these are the legs of Toshnik, who's got himself back into the action. Surprisingly, hardly a mark on him after that slip and slide on that left-hand bend. But he's still ahead of the field, who are now on the way up again. So the Map A team, as we go into the last three kilometres for Cubino, are holding that race together. Romig will be very happy with the way this first uh, taste of mountains has gone today. The long climb to the finish will help him find if his climbing legs are there for this year. And he's using all of his team, and Rominger holding good order in second place. Berzin right behind him in third. Casagrande is also up there. Casagrande is the big surprise so far. Everybody's saying this young man is going to be a star of the future. Well, maybe uh, that ascension is starting in this year's Giro d'Italia. But this is further up the mountain, and Toshnig has been detached, or really not got back to Kengi Alta after that crash. He's got him in his sights, though, and he's hanging on. Meanwhile, Javier Morleon of the Map A team is doing a great job here for Rominger, keeping the tempo high. And Berzin and Casagrande still riding in the slipstream. That's the advantage when another team has the race leader. You can, if you've got the strength, just follow. Under the kilometre to go banner. Cubino doing what he did a year ago and getting himself a lone victory on a stage in the Giro. And I don't think anybody's going to stop him now because his lead over Kengi Alta on the road is approaching a minute and a quarter. There's Kengi Alta coming up the climb as well. And there's the time gap over the screen there. And it's going to be more than a minute and a quarter as Kengi Alta rides up to the line to take second place on the stage. But last to return for a big effort. But what a recovery here by Rominger. The gap has come down today, and Romia comes in. He takes seventh place on the stage, a minute and 38 seconds back. And the rest of the riders come over the line. Well, the gains, uh, again, a few seconds more gain for Rominger over Ugramov. And Berzin has lost a little bit of time there. Because here is Berzin. So over the last couple of kilometres of the climb, Berzin has lost big time. And in fact, he's conceded something like 20 seconds to Tony Rominger. That's his main aim. But what about this man, Maurizio Fondriest, flying high on the overall classification? Look at the clock. Almost five and a half, six minutes lost to the winner today. But indeed, a big time lost also to Tony Rominger. So, Lordolino Cubino has ridden into the top three in the overall classification today with his stage win here. A minute and 19 ahead of Kengi Alta. And then looking down the list, Tochny came home there in sixth place a minute 38 back. 1,346 kilometres now covered in this year's Giro d'Italia and they're facing 165 kilometres from Terme La Calda to Salerno. And as you can see, this one at least is all downhill as they head towards the beautiful old Roman town of Salerno. Not a day really for Rominger to worry too much about, but he'll have to watch out what's going on because there is a, quite a battle developing. This is the overall situation. He's now a minute 17 seconds ahead of Casagrande, and Casagrande is still very much in the thick of things, although his brother, by the way, Filippo, who won earlier, retired yesterday. And today, after only 17 kilometres, the riders are under pressure by an attack of some 12 men who've gone clear. And there's a little effort here to try and limit the escape. And again, Mercatoni Uno riders are trying to get on terms here. This is the breakaway. They've never really uh, been under pressure from behind. Mario Chiesa, three men down on the right of our picture, is back in uh, the attack once more. This is Girotto coming through at the moment. Well, Sanson is here, number 128. Uh, Francesco Frattini, the winner of the Grand Prix of Frankfurt, is also in here. 
And this now, there is uh, Rolf Sorensen, the Danish rider. Number 115 is Farazin for the Lamprey team. And number 26 going through there is Lafis. There's Massimo Girotto, former stage winner of the in the Tour de France. And indeed, it looks as though there's a little problem on the right there because the hand went up of the Dane, Rolf Sorensen. Wants a little bit of attention, perhaps to know exactly the whereabouts of everybody else. Now, when Sorensen was in a breakaway about six days ago, he was a threat to the overall lead of Tony Romiger. Since then, he's lost far too much time, and now he can dream only of a stage win. By the way, he's been riding the Tour of Italy for about nine years, and he's never won a stage of it, which I find amazing, because this is a man who's won most of the big races, one of the most successful Danish riders ever. Well, he's made the move again. Now, can he do something about it? He's had countless seconds. In fact, he's been almost there on two occasions in this year's event. Finished second in the time trial, don't forget, and second at Tortorido Lido as well. And uh, one occasion he probably doesn't want to remember was the bad crash he had in this event back in 1987, the year the race was won by the Irish rider Stephen Roach after his great duel with Roberto Vicentini. And these 12 leaders have not put a wheel out of place today, but the, they really are dangling just in front of the main field, being led here by Pod Denzano, the champion of Italy. 30 seconds is the time gap. These 12 riders have been together for the best part of 100 kilometers. All 12 now about to contest the sprint. The first man who's come around the corner here is the ZG Mobili rider, and that is Stefano Catai. Well, I hope he's not trying to lead out his teammate Girotto because Girotto isn't the best sprinter either. He's off to the left with the balding head there. But Katai has got his chance and Sorensen has got the best position. He's lying there in second place. Fratini is in third place, the winner of the Grand Prix of Frankfurt. And now Katai has a little bit of a gap, but I don't think he's going to hold it. It's still a long, long way to the finish. Just look at the straight here. This is a most difficult sprint. He's been totally misjudged here by Stefano Katai. He now begins to wish he could start all over again because the rides behind are jostling for position. Francois Simon is also here, former stage winner in the Giro d'Italia a couple of years ago. And the pack have closed right in behind them. There's no more time now to mess about because the field is coming down on them very, very quickly indeed. As Salagari starts to go for the line now and so too does Sorensen. And Sorensen now is digging on the wheels here and look at this Francois Simon to the right in the blue jersey as Sorensen bursts through as well Simon Fratini is there but Sorensen is going to get the win Fratini hangs on for second and Simon will take third and the bunch comes in here Manzoni gets the sprint there He's ahead of Massimo Stratzer of the Navigar team but this is how the race was won by Rolf Sorensen he came very late, but he timed it to perfection. And so now he knows what it's like to win a stage of the Giro d'Italia after nine years of trying to be first to the finish line. He wins in the end by quite a little way here. A good finish by Frattini. He gets second and Simon takes third. So this is a moment for Rolf Sorensen to cherish. He's only had one win previously this year and he is a prolific winner over the years. And there's the confirmation of the result. Salagari in fourth place, Massimo Girotto there, I was saying he couldn't sprint, he managed to get fifth. Now it's to the eve of the rest day, but the most important stage since the beginning, the time trial, over 42 kilometres, the tenth stage, starts and finishes more or less 200 feet above sea level, a little climb in the middle takes them up to 200 metres. And the best time so far set by Patrick Yonker of Australia, but Fondries has improved on that, he's gone 27 seconds quicker, 53 minutes and 38 seconds. So Fondria is still full of fight in the time trials. Now, what about Evgeny Berzin? Go back a year, number one in the tour. This year, as defending champion, last year he was dominating in the time trials and running Miguel in Jurain. This is his arch rival on the team and in the race too, Peter Ugrimov, who starts behind Berzin because he's higher up in the overall classification. There's still no love lost between those two teammates either, by the way. This is Francesco Casagrande, who has really been the surprise in this year's event so far. Everybody waiting for his bad day. Well, he's not getting one right now, and we expect a good time trial out of him. And an early chance to look at Tony Rominger's new bike. It arrived last night and weighs just three pounds. It's a carbon fiber Colnago, and he really wants to ride it, especially in this time trial. 
He's last to start, of course, today. This is Ugramov coming in at the check at 18 kilometers. And Berzin's the quickest through here at the moment. Ugramov is going very close to his time. But here's the man now setting the trend out on the course. So, Evgeny Berzin is finding his time trial legs at last. And he's going to be a challenge again in this year's Tour of Italy. There's Piotr Ugramov. The two gay whiz riders still vying for the team leadership of the team. And they're running very, very close to one another out on the course. Berzin coming up to the third check at La Vaqueria. The best time through here already finished is uh, Maurizio Fondrias, 39 minutes, 31 seconds to this point. But Berzin is going to go through with the best time by 25 and a half seconds. Just over 30 miles an hour is average speed despite the climbs. Now, Tony Rominger having the advantage of being last to start. He's ahead of Casagrande. And Casagrande himself, the time checks indicating he too is still producing a ride in the top five today if he can maintain the speed. And arrival now at the finish, Fondries still the leader. 53-38, that's the shot for Berzin to aim at and he's going to beat it, there's no doubt about that now. Evgeny Berzin has had an excellent time trial today to become a challenger again in the Tour of Italy. He rounds the furthest uh, hairpin bend to the line. It's an awful long way round that corner. Now he sees the finish. Hits the line. 53-18. 20 seconds quicker than Fondriest. But you know, Ugumov and Rominger are running him very, very close indeed. Casagrande not too far away, but this is the check at the third and final time check out on the course. And Casagrande... Rivaling uh, Bob Reek and fo fourth fastest. That's not bad for Casagrande. That will maintain a high position overall and conceding only 33 seconds to Evgeny Berzin there. Ugramov coming into the finish around that corner again and it's going to be desperately close. He hits the line. It's almost an identical time to the nearest hole second. Ugramov and Berzin will prove inseparable with those times. They will be equal on time in the time trial. What an amazing performance by those two. This is Rominger. Rominger already better than Berzin here by 51 seconds at the third check. The third check coming at 30 kilometres, by the way, just 12 kilometres from the finish. So Rominger now is riding to what will be his third stage victory, all being well in this year's Giro. The man in pink is beginning to build himself quite a lead overall. Casagrande holding himself in the frame against much more famous names than him, but he is developing and developing well. So it looks like a good decision by Rominger here to use a bike which is comparatively strange to him. Casagrande wobbling a little bit as he makes the final turns towards the finish. His time is going to be a good one though. He's now running close to the time of Fondriest. So that's the third best time recorded now behind Verzin and Ugramov. So Casagrande is definitely on a top five finish now in the time trial. That maintains his challenge. As he spins to the line, he gets third over the line. That's an excellent ride. 19 seconds slower than Berzin. Well, to concede only 19 seconds to the young Russian is a ride. Now, Rominger is going to beat them all. Look at this. 51-35 and counting as against 53-18 on the finish for Berzin. So again, Tony Rominger has delivered a blow. He's beaten the man that dominated the race last year in the time trials. Rominger is well on his way now to winning this year's Tour of Italy. And there's still the mountains to come. Hits the line in 51-54. He wins by an enormous margin. 1 minute and 24.2 seconds. So Tony Rominger has continued to increase his overall lead in this year's Giro d'Italia, his third visit to the winner's podium, and now in the overall, he is three minutes ahead of Casagrande, who has gone up to second today. Ugramov is now in to third. And after a day of rest and a rather slow train ride, the riders have now moved up the coastline to Pietra Santa, ready for a first day in the mountains of this year's race. 175 kilometres, taking the riders to Il Ciocco. And this is the climb which takes them up to the dizzy heights of 5,250 feet. This is San Pellegrino. And the rider on the attack here now is Zaina. The Carrera rider... And this, without doubt, the steepest climb in this year's Giro d'Italia. Zaina has made an attack. 
In fact, there was a breakaway of 12 riders forming after only 12 kilometers of the stage today, and this despite more than 50 kilometers being covered in slightly over the hour of racing. And there's the details of the climb, and I can just add that this has an average gradient, by the way, of 12% with a maximum slope of 16%. And the rider struggling here, number 127, Luca Cinto. And a massive crowd here on the climber San Pellegrino. 100 metres now to the top for Enrico Zaina. And he's ridden up most of the way up by himself here, and he's found the strength to just get out of the saddle and sprint for the prize at the top. As the chase behind continues, this is at Luca Cinto. And the little man in front, I think, is Nelson Rodriguez. Rodriguez, second, uh, and if you remember, a great battle in the Tour de France with him last year and Ugrimov, and he took the stage off Ugrimov in the Alps in the last week of the Tour. And he's got second place up the climb, and Shinto has taken third. Now, over the top of the climb here, Zain on his way down. Very tricky, but long descent. Rodriguez, very good at going uphill, doesn't look quite so confident on the way down and Shinto has taken control of the descent. And two minutes, five seconds, uh, the leaders now have, or the leader now has, back to the group of uh, Maglia Rosa, which is that of Tony Rominger. And as you can see, 50 kilometers still to go to finish. Round about 30 miles left to run towards the end of the stage. And the group, the split now on the main group, so Zaina has 35 seconds lead now, and now we're seeing once more the MAP-18 back in tempo. Nobody in again in that breakaway that has worried Tony Rominger. Rominger just making sure he keeps a tight rein now, especially on Casa Grande, and of course Ugrimov and Berzin, the terrible twins who race on the Gavis team, because they are watching each other as well as Rominger. And Rodriguez and uh, the, in fact, Zaina has been caught there by Rodriguez and Shinto. And this is the rest of the breakaway further down the hill. Gilberto Simoni completing this group. And the pink jersey of Rominger seemingly having everything under control on the descent. Here's the update. 140 to the chase, 2 minutes 40 back to Rominger's bunch. Well, this has been the first day of testing the mountains and as so often happens on the first day, the big riders don't attack. They wait to see where the challenge is going by. Shinto is in a bit of trouble and he was doing a Georg Totsnig on the left-hand bend there. Well, he did it with a little bit more panache. He didn't actually hit the wall. He managed to stop and put himself to rights and he's going to get back into this lead group. So we still have the three same riders out in front. Enrico. Zaina up there, and he set the trend for most of the day today, led the way up the San Pellegrino climb. And this is the other group here, this is little Alberto Eli, third in line. The chase group, still over a minute behind, the three leaders. The descent has been completed, and 23 kilometers to go now to the finish. The chase group, Laurent Magras, the ever-improving Frenchman on the right of our picture here. Once more, Mappe deciding they're going to have to do something about this and try and drag Tony Rominger back into the action. Look at the difference in the pedaling rate of Tony Rominger and the other riders. He sits there like a real true climber and pedals those low gears. This is the chase group. Coppolillo is the Navigar rider here. And taking him around the corner, Giorgio Ferland. Very quiet season this year, Giorgio Ferland has had. Number 13 at the back here is Simone. And the leader here, Arsenio Gonzalez for the map eight, trying to pull now Tony Rominger back into action, but also Ugrimov and Berzin is in that group as well as they're going now towards the approach to the finish. The three leaders are still there, Rodriguez at the back here, and Luca Cinto is the other rider, and finally Enrico Zaina. There's the entrance now to what is a five kilometer climb up to the finishing line. And this is the small group that's behind, but the main field are not very far behind this group now. The whole field is coming down very, very quickly indeed. And they are just about hanging on. Laurent Madwas is the rider anxious to get to the front there and try and create some sort of diversion. As we move further up the climb now, we've just got the two left. Shinto has gone. And there he is, so he's been dropped by the two leaders, Rodriguez is the climber, 
but Enrico Zaina is the man who's springing the surprise today. And slowly but surely, the breakaway being swept up one by one as now the Gaywiz boys are putting the pressure on Tony Romigo once again. And look at this, Zaina is an inspired rider today because little Nelson Rodriguez is having an awful job hanging on to him. And Berzine is also turning the screw. Now Rominger, probably the furthest we've seen him away from Berzine since the Giro d'Italia began as Berzine starts to attack. Sorry about this little bit of picture breakup. It's the old story with our uplift links to the helicopter above in amongst the trees. But we're seeing the action and Evgeny Berzine now trying to get rid of Rominger who seems to have recovered. He may have been caught a little way down the field there. He's up there with Ugrimov, who's taking up the pacemaking now. So Poitra Ugrimov able to do a 1-2 with Evgeny Berzin as we go back to the two leaders there together again. So while Zaina and Rodriguez fight out towards the finish, the Gaywiz tandem is now trying to get rid of Tony Romiga. A little man, Evgeny Berzin, stamping on those pedals now. Ugrimov, the aging Latvian, who is a tremendous cyclist, now riding alongside his teammate. Zaina continues to make the pace up here, and again he attacks Rodriguez. Now, can Rodriguez answer this one? He's making a much longer dig at this one to try and hold off Rodriguez, but Zaina, I don't think he's got it. He's had to, had to ease up again there. This is Rominger, lower down the slopes now. He's allowed the two Gaywiz riders to make their effort. Now he's showing them what's left in his legs, and in fact, he's pulling them clear of the rest of the field. Now, Rominger and co. are riding around about 7th or 8th on the road at the moment. There's still the stragglers of that breakaway. Rominger continues to set the pace just to let them know that he really is the strongest man in this year's Giro d'Italia. Starting this morning with a nice three-minute buffer over Casa Grande, who we haven't seen for the last few minutes on this climb, obviously trapped back in that chase group. There's Piotr Ugrimov, and there is Evgeny Berzin, up toward the dizzy heights now, at the top of the finish today. As the riders turn inland, away from the Tyrrhenian Sea, just for the finish. And this is Rodriguez, still on the wheel of Zaina, and uh, inside the last kilometre. And these three are clear. But in between them somewhere, we still have Simony, Furlan. We haven't seen sight of those yet. The rest has slowly been swept away by the group, and Ugamov continues. About 400 metres to go now for these two leaders, and Enrico Zaina has tried and tried and tried again. He was leading, don't forget, over the top of the big climb today. Second over was the man who's second alongside him right now, Nelson Rodriguez. This is the interesting group behind, and another ride, it looks like Laurent Madwas has been picked up by the Gay Wiz Mappe race here. And again, Berzin leading Rominger. Laurent Madwas, the Castorama rider, about to be picked up. And Zaina takes a good look there at Nelson Rodriguez. Well, Rodriguez won't like the finish here because they actually finish on an athletic track. It certainly won't be in the favour of the little climber from Colombia. And I wonder if he knows it. I bet you Zaina does. She starts to pick up the pace again now as the mountain starts to level out. A nice little glance to the right here. He will see the finish here, Enrico Zaina. And he's going to make sure he gets into the entry first. Nelson Rodriguez itching to get round him, though, and going to have a go through on the inside. And the sprint is on now as they start to go for the line. This is a very good effort by Rodriguez. It wasn't enough because they came off that bend, and I'm sure Zaina knew about that one. He got the sprint in third place there. Simony comes over the line. This is the group now contesting fifth. Ugrimov gets that. Furland came in just between the two there. But there is the rider who got his stage win in the Tour of Italy. Another first for him as well. Enrico Zaina uh, taking the victory for Carrera. This is how he did it. And uh, Rodriguez caught off guard there. He came round the corner. There was the finish, and it was all too late for him. But it certainly wasn't for Enrico Zaina. He gives Carrera the victory today. The champagne and the two beautiful women in yellow. And this is the stage result, but more importantly now, Ugrimov is up to second, but three minutes, eight seconds back, and Berzin is into third place overall. 
A stage 12, a flattish day going from Borgo Monzano to Cento of 201 kilometers, this did prove to be a lesson of how not to sprint. Mario Cipollini, keep an eye on him, he's in the blue jersey down at the head of the peloton. The finishing line approached, the field was all together. Cipollini would win the stage, but he would be disqualified, and if you watch closely, you'll see why. As they all swung round into the home straight, Jan Zarada was the rider on the far left of the screen. Cipollini was, in fact, in a bad position. He was trapped in the centre of the field. As we look at the shot here, he was already clear and sprinting, seemingly to his third stage victory in this year's Giro d'Italia. Certainly he was on his own, and by this time he was about to win his third stage. Gian Verada on the right would take second, and Giovanni Lombardi would get third. So everybody went off to the podium, and the celebrations began. But then the referees took another look at the photo finish, and as a result of that, they decided to disqualify Cipollini. This is why. The blue jersey of Cipollini is fifth in line. On his right there is Manzoni. He clearly pushes him out of the way to make room for a clear approach to the finish. Now, it did appear to me that was a very hard decision by the race referees because I don't think it made very much difference to the actual race result. Victory was given, in fact, to second-place finisher Jan Zorada. Lombardi was third, Chitero was fourth, Manzoni was fifth. Pieve di Cento to Rovereto, 218 kilometres, and the mountains are getting closer now, and this a very tough stage indeed. Just one climb, though, coming towards the end. It's the climb of San Valentino. And just watch this now as we replay what happened earlier in the stage. A little bit of a wheelie being done by a Gavis rider and resulting in that rather horrendous crash, but thankfully nobody injured. And just take a look at it again. Watch just behind the AKI rider as a Gaywiz rider seems to catch his foot and down he goes. And a very nasty fall indeed. And I can think of an easier way to pick grapes. And the amazement too of the riders at the front as they look over. But the race continuing now and on the climb of San Valentino the only king of the mountains counter, Piccoli still the leader by the way in this competition as he has been for much of the Giro this year and 45 kilometers remaining. Well, there's been a number of attacks now but nothing has got clear yet except this small group is now beginning to make some progress. It was originally 13 riders, it's thinned down a little bit now and in this breakaway group among others is Oliveira Rincon and Pascal Richard, the Swiss rider, and this is the chase now. And Berzin again playing fully now his part in this race. The terrible twins, I've called them, and there they are again. Ugramov and Berzin riding almost side by side, and alongside them both is the pink jersey of this year's race. Seemingly invincible. And Piccoli is at the head of the race here. The leader in the King of the Mountains scoring well again. And Dmitry Konishev, the rider briefly seen at the back of the group there. So Piccoli is really shot to the fore in this year's race. And he's talking here across to the other rider who is Vyacheslav Bobrik. In fact, he was obviously asking him for a drink. Bobrik is Russian, but now he resides, uh, having come here to Italy with um, Evgeny Berzin, former both uh, Russian national squad riders. He now speaks fluent Italian. And still, Romiga looking rather contented with the way this race is going. We're on the edge of the Dolomites and tomorrow we'll be in the thick of them. And perhaps he's thinking more of that as we approach the small finishing circuit here with 17 kilometres remaining. And the breakaway don't look like being caught at all now. They're hanging on to quite a nice little lead here over the main field. They're quite a long way ahead now over six minutes but the group containing Berzin and Rominger is round about a minute 30 and here they are and Patrick Jonker the Australian rider his first season for him on the Spanish Once team enjoying a little bit of the action 
But this is now Jonker's teammate here, and this is Olivier Rincon. He's on his second season with the Onsay team, and alongside him is Pascal Richard. And Richard having a very, very good season. In fact, he's won four races already this year. And he was the king of the mountains indeed in the Giro d'Italia one year ago. Now they've got clear on the last climb of the Col de Patoni. And the gap is still not over significant. About, well, there it is, a minute and 40 seconds on the group containing Tony Rominger. Rincon doing a lot of the work here. And just two days ago, his wife gave birth to their child, and so he's got something to celebrate. And the Ante team have had a quiet race so far. Eric Broeking in the early moves has dropped away significantly, and Rincon now putting that to rights with an attack here, a very narrow approach up towards the top of the Patoni. 208 kilometers covered at this point, just 10 kilometers from the finish, and that's confirmed on the right of the screen there. And still, it's the Gay Wiz boys who keep the pressure on, and Rominger beginning to enjoy their presence, I think, because he's using them a little bit now. Minute 48 to the two leaders. A very gentle left-hand turn here, and it looked like a trip into space if he didn't make it too tightly around that corner. These roads are so difficult to really get a chase going in because they are so narrow and twisty. Back down below on one kilometre to go now. Well, Rincon and Richard, surely Pascal Richard is the sprinter, former champion of his country, Switzerland, former stage winner of the Tour de France and the Tour of Italy. And this is a late chase. It looked like it was the Gabriel's rider, Bob Reek, who's again slipped off the front. And Bob Reek trying to get on terms, and he's got them in his sights. Now, if they mess about, he'll have them. And in fact, look at this. Richard has seen him coming, and he's going to gamble. Richard is waiting as late as possible, and Rincon is going to take him on in this wall of nerves. And just look at the speed now of the advancing Vyacheslav Bobrik. He's closing in so quickly. Stages have been won like this, and Richard isn't showing any signs of panic. Richard is still waiting for Rincon to make the move. Rincon goes now. Bobrik ever so close, and he can't quite get on. As Richard easily takes the lead and kicks away. So Pascal Richard takes this stage of the Giro d'Italia, followed over the line by Oliveira Rincon, and this is Guerini who comes across the line in fourth place. And Piccoli, the king of the mountains, he'll keep his green jersey for another day. He is finishing almost 50 seconds down in fifth place. This is the sprint for the best of the rest. And it looks as though David Rebelin is about to take on uh, Casa Grande and get him on the line indeed. And also involved in that sprint too is Jens Hepner. But there's the happy smiles of Pascal Richard back on the winner's podium for him as he was so many times in the Giro a year ago. And this is how he did it. And what a cool nerve he had too. He knew that Bobrick was coming up and he didn't panic. He waited and went and he won. And with the main field and all the favourites in at 1 minute 22, there was no real change overall. Rominger, Ugramov, Berzin, Casagrande, the order. And that might well change now because we're on to stage 14 at 240 kilometres. This, the longest stage of this year's Giro, and it is a brute of a course as well. The riders are in the Dolomites now, and they finish on top of the Val Senalis. So the riders have left Trento, and they've gone right up to the snow line here. This breakaway going clear on the Paso di Penis, and containing in it number seven at the back of the group is Alberto Volpi. But again, this early breakaway containing no riders who can offer a threat to Tony Rominger. They're gambling on a long break here, perhaps to pull back a little bit of time. Tomar Davy is also here for the Bonesto team. The Bonesto, without the leader, Miguel Indrain, have had a very, very quiet race indeed. No one to really work for. And this is a small group that has got clear trying to join them. It's being led by Maurizio Fondriest. Enrico Zeiner has got back to the front, our hero of a couple of days ago. And the rider in blue is the ever-consistent and, I must say, ever-improving Laurent Madouas. And this is now on the climb of the 2,100 metres pass, the pass of the Monte Giovo. It was the previous climb when the breakaway got clear of six, and it looks as though Fondriest is determined enough now to try and get up to those six leaders. So a stage win under his belt, Maurizio Fondriest, but he's dropped far and away from the overall challenge of a high GC finish here. 
Again yesterday, he lost eight minutes on the leaders, but it seems he wants to do something today. This is Zainer, and this is the lead group here. And number 104 at the front there is Hernan Buenahora, very, very consistent Colombian rider on the Kelme team. And nearly at the top now, the Paso de Montijovo. And the other rider from Kelme seems to go everywhere that Buenahora goes in the mountains, and that's uh, Lord Alino Cubino. Nelson Rodriguez bringing the riders up and under the banner and they've stayed more or less together, five of them surviving as they go over the top and Zainer on the back of them now as well. Just about below the snow line, so often the Giro d'Italia tangles itself up with the end of the winter snows and as you can see there the roads are wet as the snow continues to melt. Three minutes fifteen, back to the main group and containing Tony Rominger, Ugramov, Berzin and one or two riders not being content with just newspapers for the rather chilly descent. I noticed one or two wearing their overcoats. As they now make their way back down the mountain shortly and then they head on towards the finish at Val Sinalis. Well, I think this is a very wise way to race the stage here. 240 kilometers, a long way, of course, in the mountains and Rominger is allowing his rivals, if they want, to attack him. He has never put a foot wrong so far. His team also have worked extremely well to keep him right in a position from which to launch any possible required counter-attack. Talking of counter-attacks now, here's our little group together, and uh, that's Zainer now joining the leaders. This is Laurent Madwas and Fondriest. They're still in between, the group now being headed again by Mappe. A little bit lower down and the sun is out, you can see from the shadows of the riders. And there's the small group coming up, a small gap too, 11 seconds to these two chasers, they're going to be on very, very shortly now. There's been no sign of worry here though from the Mappe, oh and I think my shoulders might ache just a little bit after a course like this today. And that is Arsenio Gonzalez, uh, just uh, stretching his shoulder muscles there. He knows there's a lot of work still to come. The gap, though, is not significant. Uh, two minutes, 15 seconds. We still have the long climb up to the finish. And I'm quite sure it's not quite the Alpe d'Huez of the Giro d'Italia, but it is a hard climb. And I would think that Tony Rominger is going to wait until then. These riders in the lead are certainly not out of reach at the moment because there's 30 kilometers, 30 miles rather more or less are still to go to the finish, 45 kilometers. Well, not only has this been the longest stage of the race today of 240 kilometers, but the majority of it has been into a very strong headwind. And that's not a smile on the face of Laurent Madras, it is in fact a grimace. Rider going through here and just uh, keeping the tempo steady, Menegotto from the ZG team. Little Nelson Rodriguez. And I don't think that Madras is going to get too much shelter on his wheel. Well, it's been a long and bitter chase. All of the gaps are coming down, but Fondriest is nearly on and he's bringing with him Alberto Volpi. Volpi is coming back from that lead group, in fact, and there they are. And this indeed is the chase behind, so it looks as though on the final climb as we head up towards the top of Val Sinalis, that the whole field could come together here, and that was going would put Tony Rominger back in with a possibility of yet another stage victory. Fatini, again trying to play an active part in this year's Giro, carrying all the confidence of a man who's won a World Cup Classic this year. But the way he was riding there, it was more for his gay whiz partners, Berzin and Ugramov. Reformation at the front, Rodriguez, Buenohora, Zaina, Madwas, they're the riders up front. The face of Tony Rominger looking a little bit concerned, but he needn't. The gap is still down, 20 seconds to the chase group, 122 between Rominger and the very front group, but just over a minute to the handful of riders in front. And a minute on a climb of this stature is not very much. And it looks as though Cubino is having a bit of trouble. That was Cubino passing through. This is Madwas. Buena Hora is the other rider in Kelme Colors, 104. And Maurizio Fondriest has given up. He's allowing the group to come to him. Volpi too. 
Well, Volpe won't be too worried about this. He's a great climber, Volpe. He's had a couple of very good seconds in the Alps in the Tour de France. And uh, John Unzaga leading the race for Mappe at the moment. Now, Cameron Madras, who always tries in the mountains, can he just do something today and take out the win? Little Rodriguez, who was in at the kill a couple of days ago, and now is there again, seemingly, as Enrico Zaina, another man that's featured well, also trying again for Carrera. Looking at Zaina there, that wouldn't it have been nice to see Marco Pantani in the thick of the action? The rider unable to start this Giro because of an accident involving an auto car just before the race began. We wish him well and hope he gets back to form for the Tour de France. Well, it's hardly the big grand peloton of the Giro d'Italia, but it does contain all of the rivals down there, and they're coming in slowly but surely, and surprisingly, Rodriguez here is slipping away, leaving just a couple of men up front. Well, Zaina is one of them. Madras has gone from our view, so the other one must be Buena Hora. And there he is. So the Colombian climber and Enrico Zaina, who is having a really, very, very good season indeed, that man. He's really matured this year. He was fifth in the Grand Prix of Frankfurt. And now he's in with a chance of a stage win here again. Making all of the running. Wayne Hora follows him, but the group is coming up behind at a relentless rhythm. There they are. Tony Rominger in pink, always on his shoulder. Last year's winner of the Giro, Evgeny Berzin, they've got them. So the last of the breakaways are back in this very select front group now. There's still plenty of time on the climb. And another attack immediately. Buena Hora is caught. This looks like Gonzalez is going. Another Kelme rider. He's leaving himself something like uh, 18, 19 kilometers to the top of this mountain because it is, believe it or not, a 23 kilometer climb. And he's got the little gap, and I don't think there'll be too many riders ready to take up the chase immediately after a long effort to bring back the rest of that breakaway. Nine kilometers to go now, and the legs are beginning to ache, and the shoulders are beginning to roll. Well, this is uh, Chepi Gonzalez from the Kelme team, and to me, he's lost an awful lot of his rhythm in these last couple of kilometers. It's still a long way. The gap counting on the top of the picture there, and it's just round about half a minute. No change in this group composition at all. Still, all of the men who matter are here. Rominger, Ugrimov, Berzin, Casagrande, Kipucci. They're the top five overall in this year's Giro d'Italia, and they're still locked together, riding the mountain in the same bunch. Everybody tempting to see just how strong Rominger is, if they need reminding, because he is so obviously strong this year. He has come here with tremendous form. Continuing his climb, Olivier Rincon riding on his wheel in the yellow jersey of the Onsei team, and he's in, he's in a bit of a gay with Samage at the moment, with uh, Evgeny Berzin at the back and Kutu Ugrimov at the front. Still trying to bring back the cheeky attack by Gonzalez. The flotilla of motorcycles ahead indicating that they're not very far away from him either. But this is a group which is getting clear from the rest of the field now. Once again, the top men are projecting themselves. Francisco uh, Casagrande uh, seemingly having a little bit of difficulty following the big wheels in the mountains. And there is the rider who broke away, Gonzalez, and he's now being brought back to heel. A good look over his shoulder, and he sees the Maglia Rosa of Tony Rominga, again at the head of the race where the leader should always be. And Rincon has gone. Rincon has done the classic move, just in fact as Gonzalez did. Rincon has waited for the capture and jumped clear. He's absolutely flown away from this gap. And don't forget he was second yesterday. He was annoyed about that because he was hoping to celebrate the birth of his new child which is now three days old, by the way, and he's now trying to put amends and get the victory today. Berzin looking across, in fact, looking over the shoulder of Rominger, because Berzin anxious to put time two into Casagrande and Kierpucci. So too, Ugrimov. Ugrimov and Berzin locked together, fighting at the moment for second place overall in this year's race. And Rominger need do nothing but follow these wheels. These are the men who have to attack him, who have to get the time. He has the time. He leads Ugrimov at the moment by a lot more than three minutes. Three minutes and eight seconds, in fact. 
3.16 over Berzin and 3 minutes 20 over Casa Grande. Kia Pucci, who is fifth overall, is over five minutes behind. And Zaina, who has ridden again so well today and is currently in sixth place overall, well, he's six minutes and 24 seconds down. But you've got to hand it to the two boys from Gay Wiz. They are pushing the pace at every opportunity. They haven't conceded this year's race at all yet. And this is Casa Grande here. He's trying to ride himself back into the race. He's lost a little bit of time. But he may well get back before the top. It's a long climb and things happen to the body on long climbs. One minute you're going well, the next minute you can feel very, very rough indeed. Well, so far, Tony Rominger hasn't felt rough at all. Three stage wins, a two in the time trial and a mountain top finish as well. Well, sort of mountain top, hill top really. But this is certainly a mountain top finish. And Oliviero Rincon has flown. He's gaining time too, and if he gains good time, he could be a man that will cause concerns, especially to the two riders in blue. Rincon started the day in 11th place, 7 minutes and 56 seconds behind the leader, but don't forget he's only 4 minutes behind the two riders in the blue jerseys, and that is why they're being forced now to set the pace in the chase. Rominger knows it, and that's why he's using them. And in fact, it looks to me as though they've got Berzin in a little bit of trouble here now. Evgeny Berzin could be conceding a little bit of time to his teammate Ugramov. He will not be happy with that. Ugramov has openly said rather unkind things about Berzin, like he is not a man you would want to know. Well, perhaps that's why he's leaving him. So Ugramov now trying to work with Tony Rominger. And legally he can do it. If Berzin can't keep up, then drop him. And they're getting closer and closer to Oliviero Rincon. And this again is a tremendous show of strength now because Rominger is working with Ugramov and Rincon is far from safe. In fact, I think they're going to come up right behind the Colombian by the end of the next kilometre or so. They're going to have him. And Ugramov is sensing it because look at the rhythm he's got there. And Berzin somehow has found the strength to come back. Now the hill did level a little bit and in fact Berzin has taken full advantage of that. And this is the chase behind with Claudio Chiapucci, Heinz Imboden is the rider in the red jersey. And the other rider who is also in on the move there I think was Casa Grande. And these are the three riders now at five kilometres to go chasing the leader Oliviero Rincon. You can just see him in the distance. And the group behind them, the man in the middle isn't in fact Casa Grande, it is Georg Tochnig, the Austrian rider on the Palti squad. So Casa Grande, probably the man among the leaders who's in the most trouble today because the top three riders are right here and still marking one another. And I think they're all rivals even though two are on the same team. Verzin setting the pace, Ugamov matching him wheel for wheel, Rominger again content to follow. And why shouldn't he? Well, it looks as though Rincon has survived here. He was going to be caught, I thought, but he started to ride away again now because the hill has started once more to go up. And there's probably the most respected manager in the world of professional cycling, Manolo Saez, who's now shouting at Rincon and telling him you can win this and make up for the second place yesterday. The arrival here of the other three, Kiapucci, Imboden on the right and Georg Tochnik. So now we have six riders chasing here now. Ugramov checking out who just came up and the first man he saw was Claudio. So the devil is here as well. Heinz Imboden, former champion of Switzerland, goes straight to the front. They're all gathering their strength behind this rider who's looking very, very tired. And this is the hapless Casa Grande who is losing time today. Let's hope he doesn't lose too much. He started the stage fourth overall. Don't forget he's been as high as second. And now he's having to survive, without doubt, his most difficult day of this year's tour. Also the longest too, don't forget, a four, uh, two, uh, 240 kilometres. And nobody willing to set the pace that might finish off the lead of Rincon. And Rincon heading up towards the finish. He's about 900 metres from the line. And this is the chase group. This is Georg Totnik, Totnik who's gone clear here. So Totnik has got clear. He slipped them somewhere. He's gone under the banner. The other five are right there. But they're not going to stop it. Rincon has now got his victory. 
Olivier Rincon, the 27-year-old Colombian rider, gets the most memorable stage of the race, the longest indeed. He gets the victory seven and a half hours in the saddle today. Uh, Tochnig continues to show us what a great rider for the future he really is. Despite that crash a few days ago, he's now going to take second place as the sprint starts behind. It's Rominger who starts the sprint. So Tochnig gets second place. He'll be just over a minute behind. Rominger coming clear, claiming a few seconds as well in the sprint. Ugramov tries to limit them, but he's hanging on. He's still going to lose one or two, and every second counts. Rominger has stolen the march again and the man missing is Berzin because this is Claudio Chiapucci and Berzin with him so Claudio Chiapucci, Berzin, Imboden in that order over the line and they lost a few more seconds to, to Rominger this rider though, Rincon has now moved himself up into the top six places overall All smiles for Oliveira Rincon in the Onse team. Have a good stage victory there. And here's another view of it as well. It's not too often we see Rincon win a stage, but when he does, he does it in fine style, and it's always up a mountain. And our two senorinas feeling the chill air on top of the mountain today as they welcome the stage winner, Oliveira Rincon. And there's the result. 118 was the final gap over Toshnik. Rominger, though, gaining time yet again over Ugramov and Berzin. And there it all confirms. Ugramov now 314 back. Berzin 329. Casa Grande hung on for fourth. So to the 15th stage, 185 kilometres, not anywhere like the length of yesterday. The riders now heading off from Valsenales into Switzerland, where they cross the border after around 60 kilometres of riding. It's hills all the way. And you know, when you have a short stage, you so often have a very difficult one. Well, from the beauty of Italy to the stunning contrast of the beauty of Switzerland. And here's where we are on the Passa del Fuan, 103 kilometres to go, the first serious climb of the day and a breakaway of some 17 riders have got clear. The King of the Mountains, who is proving to be a very solid King of the Mountains leader, Mariano Piccoli, going over the top first, more points in the bag. He's looking certain now of keeping that jersey all the way to Milan and he's very confident indeed. He's made a good move here to get into a breakaway group and temporarily at least they've split up at the front of the field. And they've all regrouped. This is the composition of the breakaway. Piccoli is the most noted rider in it. Buena Hora is back here again, and Furlan and Bobrik. And among the other riders, Pavel Tonkov, another Russian rider, and the two stage winners, Rishar and Sorensen. And this is now the top of the overspin pass, and again a sprint, and again it is the King of the Mountain showing he can sprint as well as he takes on Gurini and takes the points. So he's continuing to get full points today, and this almost certain to confirm him as the winner of the King of the Mountains. The main field going over the top here, 2 minutes and 11 seconds back. And the group reforming at the front, these riders who have set the trend all day. And the pace has been very, very quick indeed. This is Berzin, and Berzin looks to me as though he's in open space here. He's trying to go clear. We've just started the climb of the Fuela Pass. The gap is down to two minutes, and Berzin is now trying to go by himself. Well, the one rider we haven't seen but we know is in trouble is Francisco Casagrande. He has got a problem, and he's been dropped by this league group today as last year's champion of the Giro presses on and is going clear. Now, for the last two days, Bombini, the, organ, the uh, manager of the Gaywiz team, has been saying that his two riders will continue to attack Rominger, and I wonder if we're seeing the start of it right now. And in fact, we've just seen there the two Gay Wiz riders coming together because numbers one and number two, Berzin and Bobrik, are now together, and they're picking the way through the remnants of the breakaway. Number 102 being caught up there is Garcia. And number of 128, that is Rolf Sorensen. Now this is an amazing turnabout. We saw the quick glimpse of the face of Tony Rominger for the first time, looking a little bit concerned here. Bobrick too looks as though he's in trouble. He's falling back. But he's seen his team leader come to the front and he's going to go again. Now he's got there, he wants to split this up. This has been a superb piece of riding by Berzin to get across to this group. There is the third group on the road now. And this is Bobrick coming back to that group. So he's now going to have to try and find the strength to get in with Tony Rominger. 
But the man who is causing trouble now, high up in the Dolomites, is Evgeny Berzin. And these are the riders who have been having the race themselves. They are actually ahead on the road now, Guerini and Piccoli. But that's not the concern of either Berzin or Rominger. They've got other fish to fry today. Over the top of the Fluella Pass, the gap around about two minutes, more or less. And the man shaking his fist would like him to wait for him here is Farfan. Slowly but surely, a little bit of regrouping going on. Pascal Richard sitting there at the back. But this is a significant move now, and the first time that we've seen that Rominger actually release his grip, and I don't think he will have done it voluntary. Berzin's made an extremely good move here. But you've got to have the legs to do a move like that. Going across on the climb, joining the leaders that have been in front for a long, long while today. Now he's got some strong people to help him here. Pavel Tonkov, for example. The ref in rider who's setting the pace down there, Heinz Imboden. 50 kilometers from the finish. And the group reforming, and that was Berzin right at the head of them. But this, don't forget, is not the group. This is the chase group all forming around him. Now, Berzin's gone back here for further instructions after the first attack has only partly succeeded. And these are the two leaders. Piccoli is beginning to show himself as a good bike rider. He's never won a race, by the way, since he turned professional back in 1993. But he's enjoying his day out in the Giro today. There's one of the dreaded tunnels. We can't go through, we'd lose our pictures. Uh, but in fact, they are the tunnels the riders fear most. They're totally unlit, and when you go into those tunnels with your sunglasses on, and then I should imagine you are frightened to death. Ferlan launching an attack again. The Gaywis putting in one more move. Berzin waiting just as long as he can here. The Mape riders are now around him. And this looks like Nelson Rodriguez. The Colombians and the Spanish riders coming into their own in the Dolomites. Buena Hora. And Fratini is the Gaywiz rider. Well, if you try and try and you win, that's one thing. But it's nice to see at least Gaywiz riders are trying to take on Tony Rominger, who has appeared to be such a solid leader. Now we're looking at Fratini here. Francesco Fratini. Rominger still has some teammates able to pull that race along while the Gaywe is just about throwing everything they can at him today. They are launching one attack after another. Over the top and down the other side once more. And Francesco Frattini is trying to draw the sting once more of the Mappe riders. There's an uphill finish today in Lenzerheide, which don't forget is in Switzerland, which is where we are right now. The riders crossing the borders today at something like 40 miles covered. And the Swiss style chalets and the first people to in Switzerland here to witness those two. We'll see Piccoli and Guerini. Ugermov again digging deep and keeping the rhythm high. And Rincon back in the frame as well. Rincon now a contender for a high overall finish, so he won't be allowed too much leeway to get clear again like he did the last two days. And Berzin still feeling extremely frisky, but he looks as though Roming is now feeling he's getting control of this situation. Berzin putting down yet another attack since he got swept up, and Rominger seemingly pedaling again that low gear, sits right back on the saddle and just tries to conserve energy while control the breakaways. But the breakaways are going to continue. Ugramov comes, Rominger's paying attention. Ugramov digs very, very deep indeed, and so too does Tony Rominger. This is wonderful racing. Well, I doubt whether Rominger might agree. Rominger gets onto the back wheel now of Ugramov. Rincon comes up, so too does Berzin. The other rider here is Claudio Chiapucci and also Heinz Imboden in that red refin jersey. And I think that's about it. Something like six riders now in this front group. Gaywiz again have the vast majority with their two top men here. And Rominger is now on his own. All of the Mape boys have fallen out of it. And what a tough tour they are having, trying to nurse their leader. Rominger, though, has always got that nice feeling of having the big time advantage over the rest. He can afford, if he cracks, just to hang on and not lose too much. He's over three minutes in the lead.
pressure eased off slightly again. These are the six riders heading up towards the finish. Rincon in yellow. Imboden in red. Heinz Imboden having a very good last few days in this race. And in fact, having said that, here he goes. Now Imboden having a little go. Rapidly being joined at the back. Claudio Chiapucci comes up at a gallop. But uh, very often a habit of Claudio to look over his shoulder when he attacks. I don't know whether it's just to have a smile at the rest while they chase him or whether to see exactly where they are. But the two riders, while we've watched what has certainly been the best part of the race, the counter-attacks behind, these two riders are staying well clear. They're still about a minute and a half clear as Piccoli is going to finish off a marvellous day out here and take his first ever victory in his professional career in two years. He gets the victory, consolidates his lead in the King of the Mountains over Guarini. Frattini went away, they never counted his move and that was on the cards too. He wasn't the marked man, he comes home in third place and takes it, 123 was the gap now, this is the sprint now, Totschnig is leading it out, so Georg Totschnig also had a great time in the Dolomites which are now coming to an end, as he sprints home in Switzerland, no he doesn't because gone over the top of him now is Francois Simon, and Simon ahead is Zena, Totschnig, Imboden on the line, so they got up in the very late closing kilometres of the climb and dropping away from the front rank was Kierpucci and Rincom but it all changed and the man who's in green as the king of the mountains and the stage winner is now Mariano Piccoli. He's never been on the podium before. As a winner that is, and let's just have a quick look at the result. There it is and significantly the other boys coming in two minutes and six seconds back. And the ride is not too far away from Milan now as we move on to the 16th stage, 224 kilometres. Just the one big climb early on, the Giulia Pass. Then we go downhill to Treviglio and that is the home, by the way, of the Bianchi Bicycle. And the race, in fact, finishing outside the Bicycle Factory. So, no real challenge downhill. The Dolomites are now behind the riders. The overall situation, Rominger leading by 3 minutes and 14 seconds. Berzin is third, and Chiapucci is now in fourth position. He's ridden a very solid race this year, Claudio Chiapucci, but he's found three rather tough men ahead of him. And again, the Mercatoni Uno riders are at the head of affairs, but not for Mario Cipollini this time, indeed, for their other sprinter, Martinello, because Cipollini abandoned the tour before the mountains begun. So the sprint coming up now towards the end, and we've got Giovanni Lombardi, who's trying to start the sprint as well, and the pink jersey is also in there, the points leader's jersey, Jan Zverada. This is going to be quite a tussle here as they come down towards the sprint. And Giovanni Lombardi is the rider who's got himself up into second place. He was the points champion, by the way, in the 19th. 1992 Olympic Games and now he's following the wheel of the other team spinner for Danza's moved out there's a fend off there by Manzoni and then there was a counter attack on a hook from Lombardi I would think that both of those riders will be disqualified but Lombardi has gone across the line first now watch this first of all as the blue meets the yellow and the arm comes out there from Manzoni and pushes Lombardi away then Manzoni begins the sprint again and heads towards the barriers and this is where Lombardi takes him into the barriers and leans on him so I would think that Lombardi, had he not retaliated, would have kept that stage victory, but instead it's going to go to Shitero, who's coming through nearest the camera. The other two riders have been declassed. So, another controversial sprint finish, and this Fidanza swings away. There's the hand clearly seen there from Mariano Manzoni. As he tries to hold off Giovanni Lombardi, and then Lombardi, taking offence to that, decides to go and have a go at him as he pushes him towards the barriers, then straightens up for the finish. And if he hadn't have made that move, then I think Giovanni Lombardi would have been given the result. Instead, it's gone to the rider on the right, Giuseppe Citerio. The overall leader is Tony Rominger, while the result is not so good for the Champagne, Lombardi has been declassed and so too as Manzoni in third. So Citerio the winner, Panin is up into second. Six stages left to go and the last and most important final time trial, 43 kilometres this, it's a mountain time trial. The ride is going from Chinate to Selvino Aviatico and it goes up to 962 metres. Evgeny Berzin, last year was in pink, this year he's still trying to work out how he can improve on his current third place overall.
He's three minutes and 29 seconds behind Tony Rominger, but more importantly, of course, he is only 15 seconds behind his teammate Pyotr Ugramov, and that, I'm sure, is uppermost in his mind. And starting with a reasonable steady speed here, because this is a very tough finish to the time trial sections of this year's Giro d'Italia, especially at the end. Tony Rominger, who has opted, by the way, to have 26-inch wheels fitted to his bike. Now, the last time he did that was in the Tour de France almost a year ago. And this is Pyotr Ugramov, who is currently lying second overall in the race, three minutes and 14 seconds down. He has finished previously second overall. That was to the great Miguel Ingerain. So Rominger is setting the trend and indeed is setting the time. Zenin Yaskula has gone the fastest through this check and you can see now that Evgeny Berzin is living up to his reputation. He's going to challenge Yaskula and in fact he's gone through with the new best time almost 15 seconds quicker. Now, Tony Rominger hasn't reached that point yet, of course. He's riding some six minutes behind on the road. And Ugramov is in front of him. Ugramov now. Yaskula is already on the board, which means that Ugramov is now behind Berzin and behind by almost 10 seconds. If he continues to lose at that rate, then he will slip out of second place overall in this year's event. And Berzin will be back up there. So the battle between the two Gabriels boys continues and I don't think Tony Rominger minds a bit. This rider well settled into his pace now. Still to come to the first check. Onto the climb. Evgeny Berzin still looking very, very strong indeed. Now let's see how Rominger compares to Berzin. Rominger the best by almost more than half a minute in fact. 33 seconds now. So Tony Rominger is out today to increase his lead even more in this year's race. And so far his average speed is 25 miles an hour despite the climbs that have gone over the top of the Col de Gallo. And he really is riding well. Berzin now though is digging deep and I think he's being pulled by the fact he wants to get ahead of Poitra Ugramov. He knows he's got to do it today because time gained today he will try not to lose in what few stages remain and no real big challenges either. He knows it and Ugramov knows it. And here now, Berzin comes up to the finish and he's going to put the best time on the board. Casa Grande may have lost his high overall finish in this race, but even so, he's taken over the podium from Yaskula at the moment with the best time, 1-9-10.7. Berzin's going to reshape that as he crosses the line very, very shortly. He'll be around 1 hour, 7 minutes and 40 seconds when he comes up to the line. That's a great time, a minute 32 better than Casa Grande, and that will be a real time to beat now. So we've just got two riders to finish and they're both out on the course and this is the man who's making his steady ascension up towards the top of the finishing line and Ugramov is almost there. Now Ugramov tied on time almost to the same tenth of a second in the last time trial. I think it's going to be a little bit different now. He started out the day second overall. He's going to lose that second place because Casagrande is the time on the board now. He's behind Berzin. He's going to beat Casagrande's time. He's going to have to be satisfied with second. And overall, he'll be down to third. One hour, eight minutes to 24 seconds slower than Evgeny Berzin, his teammate. There's still a good race going there. And the arrival of Tony Rominger, and just look at the clock here. Tony Rominger has profited all the way. Those smaller wheels, the streamline position has helped him to climb all the way to the line. And 138, the beating. This man is having injuring margins in this year's Giro d'Italia. There's the result, the four-stage win for Tony Rominger, a minute 39 ahead of Berzin, 2.03 in front of Ugramov. Casagrande again come good with fourth, but overall, Casagrande nowhere to be seen. Rominger, though, is now five minutes eight ahead of Berzin. Ugramov, though, still has a chance, perhaps even today, on this 18th stage of 221 kilometres, to make amends. The riders now going from Sotelo to Satuario Viccoforte. It's a ride, as I say, of 221 kilometres. The Riders now passing through their 3,000th kilometre of this year's Giro d'Italia. And a small group getting away and the rain has returned just as it was in the opening few days of the race. This group 1 minute 16 ahead. And they are Giuseppe Gurini on the far side and Denis Zanetta, a first year professional nearest the camera. Well, yesterday Tony Rominger celebrated his 100th win as a professional and there's no chance now because they're almost a quarter of an hour behind. This was a, the remnants of a breakaway of some 18 riders that went clear in atrocious conditions after 96 kilometres covered. And they are surviving to fight out the finish. 
Now, Gurini is on the back of this group. He's been beaten already in the last three days, don't forget, into second place. And he's never won a stage of the Giro, while Zanetta is a first-year professional. He's never won a race here either. And now the spin is on between the two of them. And the rain coming down as heavy as ever as they fight in the twilight. But it looks as though it's going to be a victory, or is it for Zanetta? Yes, he looks confident enough. And Guarini, absolutely furious with himself. He can't believe he's second again. And a little bit of a lead here in the spin for third place. It's Sergei Uchikov of the Palti team who is hanging on. This is the remnants of the breakaway away for much of the day. Now this, believe it or not, is the main field. Tony Romer, you can just pick him out there. I don't know what he's doing wearing his sunglasses because, as you can see, the rain is absolutely torrential. And the main field today are pottering along. They are over 15 minutes behind as they come up to the finish. The clock is still counting. And as they cross the line, it is going to be 15 minutes and 25 seconds. There's the happy man of the day, 25 years old, Denis Zanetta, a new professional. He gets the win. And in the runner-up position was Gurini yet again, Uchikov third, and Vladimir Pulnikov fourth. Whatever happened to him in this year's Giro? And as we look now at the map of the stage, which takes the riders into Briançon in France, 202 kilometres over the high spot of the race, the Col de Agnello at 2,748 metres, there it is. The rumour is it's snowing heavily and the race could well be in danger of cancellation before reaching the summit of that climb. Conditions here now are quite atrocious and it's always a risk the Tour of Italy takes being run in the month of June because, of course, the snows very often are still here. And this is, in fact, the situation on the climb of the Col Daniello and a number of vehicles buried, in fact, by an avalanche. And this is a look back at what has happened here as the vehicles going up for television have become totally blocked and the chains no use at all. And the understanding is that a number of vehicles have been buried, but as far as we know, nobody has been killed, although people have been injured up there on the mountain. As a result, the race is going to be finished at the point of the Intergiro sprint, which is some 10 kilometres onto the climb of the Col Daniello, and that's where the stage will end. The riders have, in fact, only been told during the race, and in the breakaway now is Pascal Richard here at the head of affairs. Just behind him is the refin rider, Rodolfo Massi, and Nelson Rodriguez, the little Colombian climber, is in the action again. Well, there's a shock for him now because he's not going up to the 9,015 feet point of this climb. The race will finish halfway up it but they're in the breakaway and they're in the last kilometer and nobody's going to catch them now well conditions absolutely atrocious on the gateway to france because that's what the mountain is and they're not going to see the top of it because after the race ends they will go round by auto route and into the town of briançon for tomorrow's stage and this is Massey just checking over his shoulder to see if anybody is coming up. They've been riding for just around about four hours on the climb. And the other two riders are Richard and Rodriguez. Now, it's uh, Buena Hora. He's here somewhere. Oh, there he is. He's just popped straight through from nowhere. They knew he was coming. And Hernan Buena Hora has simply flown by them. And they've gone for him now. And in fact, Rodriguez reaching for the gear levers there as he tries to get onto the wheel of Rodolfo Massi and the rider gripping very, very quickly indeed. A man who always seems to ride well in bad conditions is Pascal Richard. And they've got onto Buena Hora. Everybody else uh, that matters is over a minute back and you can go back uh, a long way to the real men who matter in this year's Giro d'Italia. The clock just tripped over four hours in the saddle. The riders only, only being told about the finish change within the final hour. So you see, they haven't had much warning at all. These are the fortunate ones. And it was a great effort by Buena Hora, but he's paying for it now as he drops away from the action. And now it looks as though Massey is opening up the sprint here. Pascal Richard in second place. Rodriguez so often in the hunt for the finish, but can't finish it off with a big sprint. He falls away now as Richard gets his second stage win of this year's Giro. A controversial one though it will be, not from the racing point of view, but indeed a little bit of organisational chaos. The avalanche has blocked the road and the workers here trying to make sure that people aren't buried in the snow. 
And indeed, they're most concerned exactly about the whereabouts of one of the members of the organization here, Franco Carbonyagi, and his son, because they're believed to be under the avalanche. The road was clear, but the snow started to fall again, and as a result of that, an avalanche came, and between the lead cars going over, the advanced caravan, if you like, of the Giro d'Italia, and the main envelope of the race itself. So this has happened very, very late on, and as you can see, a lot of help quickly at hand. The men with the long, thin poles trying to strike the roof of Mr. Carbonyagi's car, I would imagine. Uh, but as far as we know, he is in there somewhere. But I am able to say, as these are pictures taken earlier, that in fact uh, Mr. Carbonyagi and his son were rescued unhurt. So the snows are now behind us as the riders have gone around the mountain to Briançon for a 203 kilometers 20th stage to Gressonay Saint Jean. And now this is a long attack by Sergei Uchikov, the Ukrainian rider, and on the Palti team. And every year this young man does seem to improve tremendously. A small league group here as they head up towards the finish of Gressonay. The riders today reaching 3,500 kilometers pedal. They're not too far ahead, and the field down there, nicely grouped together again. Nobody missing from the overall leaderboard. Tony Rominger still well in control, as we now pass the six kilometers to go to the finish. Now, can Uchikov hang on to this lead? He's certainly not very far ahead of those who are chasing him. The main field is only about a minute behind, and we've got riders in between. There's the pink jersey. And behind him, Evgeny Berzin. This is the move up on the mountain. It looks as though Massimo Girotto has had enough. He's sagged off for there as they try to bring back the man who's setting the pace. And here he is, Sergei Uchikov from the Ukraine. And further down, less than a minute behind now, the yellow jersey here of the Once rider, Oliveira Rincon. Rincon is now fifth overall at the moment, but he's 10 minutes and 21 seconds behind Tony Rominger. He'll hope to improve on that because he could reach Claudio Kierpucci with a good effort. Kierpucci is one place ahead of him on the overall. That's Ugonov trying to make ground again because remember Ugonov now displaced by Evgeny Berzin in the overall race for the runner-up position. Berzin has counted the move on the right of our picture in that unfamiliar all-blue jersey because he is wearing the leader's colours there of the Intergiro Sprint competition. But in fact, Tony Rominger is set to make a clean sweep of all the competition in this year's Giro. And Massimo Girotto falls away even further now as Berzin goes through on the wheel of Oliviero Rincon. Anxious not to allow his teammate Pietro Ugamov any way at all of gaining time on him now. There's only a few seconds separating these two riders and the Gavis team overall. And Berzin knows he can't afford to lose even a handful of seconds. And Ugamov wants some help from Rincon and tells him so, but Rincon doesn't seem able or indeed willing to go through. He's looked across at Berzin, and then he points at Berzin, he points at uh, Rincon, and they say, he's saying something like, look, they're not very far behind, and he's telling him again, but Rincon, well, I'm not sure whether Rincon speaks much Latvian, and so he's just sitting there looking at him. But how long is it since we've seen such an infight between two teammates in the major tour and the leader, Tony Rominger, taking a back seat further down the mountain? Because now we've got Ugamov attacking. These two starting the day separated by just nine seconds in the overall classification. Berzin having a little bit of trouble here to hang on to Ugramov. Rincon again following the wheels. Back to the chase behind and the pink jersey himself, Rominger is now doing the majority of the work. Rodriguez up into second place. Just behind him too there, you can see the white jersey of Claudio Kierpucci. And so Ugramov caught, has gone into the back seat. A little bit frustrated here, Pietro Ugramov, because what he's saying is, I'm doing the attacking and you're just following, and that's exactly what Berzin is doing again. Well, there's going to be no love lost at all between these two when they get to the finish. Berzin is saying, I'm on second place overall. If you want to beat me, try and drop me. And so that is a tremendous battle, I have to say, between the Gateways riders and Rominger is well out of it because he's done all the racing he needs to do to win this year's Giro d'Italia. Now, this looks to me as though we've got Pascal Richard trying to bridge the gap up to the leaders. The three light leaders. Don't forget Uchikov is up here and there he is. That's Pascal Richard with him. So they're ahead, we are now closing down, the clock is counting down the gap from the two leaders to these, the three chasers, and Ugamov seems unable to get rid of Berzin. 
Now, what will Uchikov do with Pascal Richard, the winner of two stages, the latest coming yesterday at the foot of the Col Daniello? And in fact, the answer is he's going to go for a long one, and Sergei Uchikov has gone clear. Richard a little bit slow to react there. He got caught completely off guard, and I think Uchikov's done enough. In fact, the towel has gone in for Pascal Richard. The tactic paid brilliantly. He hit him at exactly the right moment, and had he not done that, almost certainly Richard would have taken his stage win number three eight seconds have passed by and interview comes Richard followed by Ugrimov, Berzin and Rincon and Kia Pucci brings the rest of the race Tonkov, Rominger over the line so a first ever stage win for Sergei Uchikov from the Ukraine and Pulte will be very happy about that and a great win for him and one he's going to cherish he took it so well hitting Pascal Richard exactly the moment when he wasn't paying attention and he should have been but it will do nothing to the overall classification of course Tony Rominger virtually a day off for him today retains four minutes fifty seconds there's the result of the stage a five second win over Richard eight seconds over the battling threesome and the rest coming in just after that the penultimate stage of the Giro, 190 kilometres, Pont Saint-Martin to Luigno. And it's a ride with a very nasty sting in the tail today, and the weather is also atrocious. Overnight, by the way, the manager of Gay Wiz has given a big talking to to Evgeny Berzin and Pyotr Ugrimov, still second and third in the race for attacking one another, and perhaps today peace will reign. This is the main part of the race as they tackle the climb of the Paso Cuvignoni for the second and last time. It's a group which contains all of the favourites now, and still the attacks are coming. Evgeny Berzin is the man causing the problem and the rain as you can see is back with us in determined fashion here in the Giro d'Italia and Tony Rominger also now having to counter the move it's the 25th birthday today of Evgeny and he's on the attack once again this little man seems insatiable this year very proud of the fact he won the race last year the first ever win by a Russian rider so he still carries that blue jersey of the intermediate sprint leader in the Giro d'Italia, but of course Tony Rominger leads in that competition as well. He can only wear one jersey and that's the pink, although I would think in the condition today he would prefer to wear two. And this is the absolute cream of this year's Giro d'Italia, the leader, Rominger. You've got Berzin out in front, Ugrimov, Kierpucci, Rincon, Tonkov, Zaina. All of those riders are here now. In fact, the only man missing is Claudio Kierpucci in fourth place overall. And speak of the devil, and that's what he calls himself, here he comes. So Kierpucci joins the leaders now. The top seven riders in this year's Giro are now commanding the first seven places on the road, despite these atrocious conditions. There is Evgeny Berzin. He's decided to desist and wait for the chase, and Rominger is right there as well. Setting the pace, Enrico Zaina and Claudio Chiapucci. Chiapucci's had a great tour. And 525 metres is the altitude here. And in fact, missing from this group is Evgeny Berzin. I think he slipped away, and here he is. So Berzin has gone once more. He waited till they got all around him, and then he went again. Determined to have a happy birthday today for sure, despite the weather condition, the Berzin is clear. So, whether or not they've settled their differences, there's no doubt that the gay whiz rider Evgeny Berzin is going to win the stage. So last year's champion of the Giro at least will get one stage win on the record books this year. So Berzin, and he's only a few seconds ahead of the race here, comes home in just over five hours. He gets the victory. He's going to make the most of that. And looking down the road there, that attack came as a big surprise, and it was worth it. And Kier Pucci has got away from the rest here. Put Kierpucci's got away and takes second place, third place. Another one for Carrera. Zina gets it there from Tonkov and Ugrimov. But Ugrimov finishing only fifth and conceding 25 seconds today to Evgeny Berzin. And that certainly, with one day to go, will make sure last year's tour winner will finish second now when the race goes to Milan. 
So, the winner's podium at last. For last year's winner, he paid many visits here last year. Every day he got a new race leader's pink jersey, but this time it stays very firmly on the shoulders of Tony Rominger. He leads Berzine by 4 minutes and 13 seconds. The stage result there, and a great result there. In fact, they gave Pavel Tonkov third place in the end, just pipping Zaina right on the line. And so to the final stage of this year's Giro d'Italia, 148 kilometres, the road into Milano. And there is the beautiful city itself, one of the prettiest cities in the world. And the, finally, the Giro d'Italia heading back home. And it's heading home with a Swiss winner, only the third Swiss victory in the history of this event. And Tony Rominger now, having held on to that race lead ever since the day two time trial, can now expect a glorious arrival here in the city of Milan. A reminder of the overall situation after 94 hours of racing, Berzin, Ugrimov, Kirpucci, Rincon, that was the order as they come now towards the end of the final stage of this year's race, a day surely for the sprinters once again. Remember that Giovanni Lombardi disqualified once, he's now trying to get himself back into a position to make amends this time out as they swing, oh and it was a very very wide sweep indeed and a lot of dirty looks being passed around the race bunch there at the time but Manzoni and Martinello are back in the thick of this one now and we've got Manzoni leading out now in the centre of our picture but Lombardi is coming again the two riders who clashed a few days ago are back at the front and this time no doubt about it, Giovanni Lombardi brings the Tour of Italy to a close with a very clean and definitive victory ahead of Mariano Monza Manzoni and Silvio Martinelli in third place but these were the three men of the 78th Giro and two of them from Gay Wiz who battled out against each other almost as much as they did so against Tony Rominger. The result of the stage first, Lombardi ahead of Manzoni, Martinello, Pelliconi and Citerio. But the result overall, Tony Rominger becomes the third Swiss rider to win the Tour of Italy. He does it by 4 minutes and 13 seconds. He in fact now follows in the footsteps, or is it the wheel tracks, of Hugo Cobley in 1950, Carlo Perici in 1954. This was an extraordinary Giro d'Italia, and despite the apparent domination of one Tony Rominger, it was a great race. Until the next time, I'm Phil Liggett saying goodbye.